Ceramics in Japan is something that's been going on for hundreds of years in different forms. It's apparent the depth of the history in this type of work. Our first visit in Tokyo before we came to Nagoya was what's called the Third Imperial Hotel, which was built on the site after Frank Lloyd Wright's Imperial Hotel was dismantled. This is an original light from the Imperial Hotel. And we in fact went up to their private bar, which has a lot of product from Frank Lloyd Wright's Imperial Hotel. We were offered a cocktail made in glasses that Frank Lloyd Wright actually designed that was the same popular cocktail they drank in that hotel from the 1920s onwards. In one location you see buildings that have been disassembled in Japan, iconic buildings, and then rebuilt. You see the Imperial Hotel, you see the facade of a bank, and you see different styles of architecture and design through Japanese history. There was a big earthquake that wiped out most of Tokyo. Uh, and one of the last remaining buildings was, in fact, the Imperial Hotel. And as a result, it became almost like a building standard for Japan. The brilliant thing about walking up to the Imperial Hotel here at Meiji Mura is that the facade's exactly as it was when it was in Tokyo. You can see all of the phenomenal details that Frank Lloyd Wright worked with the initial collaborators from Enax to produce. He needed to find people that were able to realise his vision. The ceramicists from Tokoname area had that skill and they had the right materials. The business that started to, to make these tiles and make these handcrafted elements is the Inax that we still deal with today. They had ready access to a particular type of soil which made the clay that is that unusual orange-yellow colour that Frank Lloyd Wright wanted for that building. Is this the clay? Is this the clay? Yeah, that's the, that's the clay. Yeah. So it's a low clay, like, like, literally next door kind of clay. Yeah. In fact, the company, which was called Inner Seattle, dates back a lot longer than that, making clay pipes. This one is the old kitchen where we produce a clay pipe. He used to use salt to glaze the outside surface. And interestingly, inside the kiln, on the actual bricks that make up the kiln, you can still see the glaze that's very similar to those of those brown terracotta pipes. These are the clay pipes, very functional ceramics that I guess gave rise to the very beautiful ceramics that we now see all the way through Tokoname and the ones we see from Inax as well. We did a, a walk through the oldest part, the village, the other day, lined with blackened timber buildings. And the reason they're blackened was from all the soot, because there were so many kilns in their region. And those beautiful little blackened timber buildings are now full of artisans making an amazing array of beautiful plates and bowls. Since we started working with Inax, it's been an incredible privilege for us to get to learn from people that have been in the tile industry here for a very long time. Sugiyama san has become a very dear friend of ours. He has grown to understand our strange Australian ways. He's managed to guide us to places that I guess that we would have never have seen and perhaps never even thought to go, but he takes us to the places I think that are special. As time has gone on and as tiles have become an item that are used that's led Japan to becoming probably the world leader in artisan ceramic tiles.